Okay. And and Scott has made a uh, made it really interesting and easy to understand, but also has created this crazy successful business. Uh, called Shift Pixie. He's the CEO. Uh, their stock symbol is P-I-X-Y. You can go to shiftpixie.com. And, uh, dude, welcome back. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Hey, Sully. Good he's to be a, with he's you. He's almost the most handsome guest we have. Yeah. He really is, you know. <laughs> then, you have, then you don't have very many guests. He's, got, he's like talk show host, uh, you know, handsome. Yeah. Uh, Scott, I want you to, I, I want you to, uh, to give us the latest update uh, because you guys have taken a page from the gig economy. Uh, you guys have uh, done everything from addressing restaurant staffing shortages in COVID uh, to, uh, to third-party delivery to, uh, to ghost kitchens. Um, you guys have covered everything, and now you're in your, uh, now you're in your world headquarters there. Talk about everything that's going on with you guys. Good to see you again. Yeah, well, today I'm standing inside of our ghost kitchen operation. Uh, this is where we kind of curate and build these brands that we were talking about doing. And this whole operation that I'm standing in, Ship Pixie Labs, is actually uh, we're packaging it up to spin it out and dividend it out to our shareholders. So there's going to be, you know, some news about that. But, you know, going back to, you know, our, our very early conversations about the gig economy, it's very interesting to see that a lot of these gig platforms are now under pressure for misclassifying employees, the most recent of which was uh, uh, Uber and, and uh, some, uh, some of the uh, usual suspects in the gig economy yeah. are now uh, going to fall under the scrutiny of the Federal Trade Commission for misclassifying employees. So uh, there's a lot of pressure there. And that's why when we set up the business, we decided to take everything we knew about being a, a compliant employer, but also using technology to extend our relationship and make better connections with this this uh, more agile workforce. It's uh, it's uh, all over the place now, and everybody's talking about it. You know, it's it's interesting how you hopped on. You were an early adopter of Ghost Kitchens, and I want to I want to talk mm -hmm. to you guys about what a Ghost Kitchen is. So you've heard of DoorDash, you've heard of Uber Eats. Mm -hmm. I think there's another one. Uh, I forget. Um, Mike, you know all the food ones. Grubhub. <laughs> Grubhub. Um, um, so listen. So what used to happen, uh, and still does happen, oftentimes, is when someone orders, you know, your egg rolls or your, uh, or your, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I was the last time I ordered. I mean, I use DoorDash 17 times a week. So um, no, honestly, it's amazing. Um, but what they used to do is they, you'd see the guy come in and he'd wait at the counter or wait at the reception at the real restaurant. Yes. Right. Well, somebody came up with the idea, and I, and Scott, I don't know if it was you that told me, I think it was, is that somebody took a place like an old, uh, uh, old Costco or an old Kmart, big, giant, open building, and would create brandless kitchens. So Taco Bell would be here, the barbecue place would be here, oh, wow. the vegan place would be here, but they'd create the food where the guys go to pick up your food instead of going to the restaurant. Scott, I'll let you expand on that, because that is a huge vertical. Yeah, it is. Uh, what's what's happened is a lot of uh, 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 of the big national brands, in in an effort to be closer to the consumer, have decided rather than using infrastructure <laughs> and uh, in 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 that segment of their business, maybe they use a commissary approach. So that's what you're seeing. A lot of that. Uh, that's probably the best way to think about it, where uh, oh, everybody oh, okay. can come into a shared kitchen yeah. space. Well, I think the and, and and what's interesting is is this this is not going away. We're in a hybrid situation no. now post-COVID, right, in everything, not just people coming back to work, but how we behave as consumers. I mean, uh, you know, I do television all over the country, not on this show, but as a pundit on several other networks and then locally, and I don't ever want to go into a studio again because I have a remote studio. Obviously, we have our Loft 100 studios here, but at home, I have the same thing. I think the same thing's happening for... I mean, I used to enjoy going to the grocery store. I don't enjoy going to the grocery store anymore. I have Instacart now. As far as DoorDash goes, I mean, look yeah. at I, look at it's an easy. It, it makes convenience more convenient at this point. So, but that's just one facet of what you guys are doing. I want to talk about uh, the other things that you're doing because because there's a number of other things that, that you guys are getting involved in that, that that I think are important because when I started paying attention to what you were doing eight months ago or nine mm -hmm. months ago when we met. Uh, now I want to know what you're looking at now so I can know what's going to be next in nine months from now, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's happening over well, there? Li well, listen, the, our labs spinoff is a really big deal. There's a lot of interest in what we're doing because uh, to your point about uh, uh, consumer uh, habits changing, COVID forced a lot of those, but but really uh, the the, our, the digital economy changed a lot of the way consumers uh, connect with brands. So like where I'm standing now, what we decided to do was to curate our own brands, to use them as uh, use cases 
for this idea of a completely digital brand uh, where fulfillment was done with our own drivers and uh, in our own infrastructure. So that's what we're about to unleash here. But what we did is we spent a lot of time in the data, Sully, kind of going through who is this consumer? Yeah. What do they buy? What do they like? And when you do that, all of a sudden you realize who the demographic is and what their preferences are, and you can build a, a universe around them, which in, for us, it's kind of actually dragging us into the metaverse, but you can build this universe around them that, that completely meets their needs and meets them right where they are. Uh, Scott, I have to ask you, um, when you look at the next 18 months, top down as a CEO of a publicly traded company that also has you, there could be 10 public traded companies because of what you guys are doing there at the end of the day because of, of, of the SPAC market. But when you look at the next 18 months in this country, and, I, and you know, look at inflation is going to, that, those tides will stem at some point, okay? We're going to see life uh, normalcy again. We, you know, we're officially in a bear market for now, but I think if you look at where we were back during the Great Recession, we were at 6,700 on the Dow. Don't you wish you got in then when we're at 31,000 yeah. now? And we're panicking at 30,000 on the Dow. I mean, look, yeah. think about yeah. how that is, right? What, what I want to know is, as far as an economy goes, what, what are you seeing in the future as shifts, uh, no pun intended, and, then, and how are you guys going to address that? Well, one of the things I've loved about the human capital side of our business, Sully, is that I don't want to refer to anything as uh, 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 resistant to uh, recession. Sure. But, right. it, but it, is a very, it's, it's, it is a very robust business in good times and bad. Uh, because we're handling the human capital side of the business that most people aren't really good at. Uh, and, and in particular, when there's labor shortages right now, what we're doing with our SPAC and what we're doing with this roll-up that we're putting together in the industrial staffing space, we, we're finding that that, that is uh, um, so much more uh, viable a business today than it was when things were good because what what uh, large companies will do is they'll delever their fixed overhead, meaning some of their payroll assets in, in deference to a more flexible human capital structure. So more of a temporary staffing uh, because they can, they can uh, scale it up and scale it down. So right now, almost every one of the candidates that we're looking at acquiring, and we've been on the trail with them for some time, that they're, they're showing great growth signs, all, almost all of them. I have, in fact, I can't think of one that we've seen that's actually gone in decline. So uh, that speaks uh, you know, volumes to uh, how much uh, recession has in, uh, has has uh, really not impacted the business that we're yeah. in. Well, I got to tell you, temporary staffing has helped us a lot here. Just look at Mike Costa, and he's almost through his probation. Another two years now, he's, he's got it going. All right. Scott, thanks, buddy. We're going to see you next week. Thanks, pal. Scott Absher, CEO of Shift Pixie. Stock symbol P-I-X-Y, meaningful shift work starts here.